some things just will not die. So this past weekend was the very first weekend of the European Football League over in Europe. If you guys have not seen my last video that was just posted talking about just what to expect from a league like this and whatnot and kind of calling it the new NFL Europe per se. If uh, you guys have not seen it, make sure to put up the i card for you. Normally I was gonna just leave this alone. To be honest with you, I was gonna leave it alone. But um, after watching, actually, you know what? I'll take that back. Didn't really, <laughs> I saw a bunch of the highlights and whatnot, which that's all I can afford right now. But we'll, we'll get into it. So this past weekend was the very first weekend for European Football League, the EFL or ELF, whatever you want to call it. It actually started off with, so the first game kicked off with the Froslaw Panthers against the Cologne Centurions. Before I, I even get into this video, I just want to really commend the EFL for just kind of sticking with a lot of crap that, that they probably went through just with even starting up the league. It takes a lot of hard work to put all these pieces in place and just the fact that not only do you have you know the team set up and the players there went out but to even have a weekend stretch of games especially in games in other countries that's such a such a major major deal uh, especially in times like this so I'll kind of give my reactions on exactly what happened the past weekend and and kind of a continuation from last video like it's what are things that I see that are kind of concerning and you know something that to watch out for later on in, in the season things that I really saw this past weekend obviously is the very first game was actually in Wrocław, Poland, Panthers and the Centurions. Uh, I, I honestly thought that due to a lot of the restrictions in each country um, I didn't know how a lot of these teams were actually going to kind of combat that and, and even try to wiggle their way around the rules per se but personally the one thing I saw that was really interesting was, was just how quick the game was just how much money, I guess you could say, is involved in this league. I was just like everybody else. Uh, every weekend or so, I always watch at least one or two uh, football games, uh, European football games, and you know, I just, I'll just catch one and, and just kind of just take it all in, and then I'm usually good for the weekend. So I, watched, I watched a number of games, and obviously I tried to click on the EFL's website. I went on their Facebook page, like anybody else. I checked out all their social medias. Um, this was right right around the, the game time for for the Panthers game, and so I was naturally excited. I was like, you know what? It's about to be a brand new league. It's going to be awesome. Uh, a little bit higher level, a lot more professional type of setup. We'll see how it goes. I click on the website, and I thought it was going to be a free stream. Typically it is. Um, no. Sadly, I was mistaken. You go on the website, they actually have a game pass. A game pass of 99 euros which it equates out to about just under $120 for the season. Yes, that is right, for the season. I do not get the fact that you're a brand new league. I know you have a lot of money invested and involved, but why? Why would you not try to entice the market overseas when you're competing with another, another league like the GFL and try to entice the people? Now, despite all that stuff with the streaming stuff and whatnot, and um, like I said, I was slightly disappointed with some of the social media and whatnot. Um, I thought the social media would be a little bit higher quality. Now, what a lot of NFL teams do, um, and I know you can't really equate the same thing to the EFL with the NFL, but the one thing that I was kind of surprised with is usually whenever a team scores, they always put on their social media um, kind of like a graphic that goes around and then they have the video in the middle. I know the Chiefs do this and a number of other teams do this as well. Team scores, you know, either a field goal or touchdown, they'll post it like that. That's kind of the graphic that they, that they tend to use. A lot of times it was very similar to most like GFL teams. They just have a graphic that says, oh, touchdown, you're good, yeah. For me, for a league that, that took over a year to set up and, and get going and whatnot, it's like you figured that would be a little bit higher quality, but hey, it is what it is. It's your first weekend. I could personally spend a ton of time just based on some of the highlights and other things of, of, of the game from this past weekend. As for right now, I'm actually going to react to the best touchdowns of week one. Um, kind of look at this a little bit. Everything's fair game, so it's not just touchdowns. It is, it is you know, 
how many fans are in the stands or it's if the field looks funny who knows everything is up everything is up for grabs on this one backdoor throw I tell you I thought the Dragons would be I thought that they would have won this game against a surge Stuttgart's gonna be a team to watch I'm telling you they're gonna be difficult um, they're gonna be difficult this year but I think Dragons you cannot you cannot throw under the bus they're gonna be they're very well coached I'll, I'll give you that much ooh good defensive touchdown there we go that's a good grab wow but Vroslav's defense from this past weekend looked really really good some of their DBs I thought that they were ooh they got the ball back Centurions good guy they lost Vroslav lost a lot of talent to um, to Potsdam Royals and so I didn't know how they were going to react to it but it looks like they got a couple of good guys as backups although they dropped the ball on that one I'm telling you do not be fooled by Hamburg and Frankfurt's team I right? don't don't do not be fooled by any of them all right I'm telling you even though it's a low scoring game these are two really good teams I think Hamburg is is very well coached I think so is, I think Frankfurt has the talent as well um, I think you will see these two teams again obviously you have Jadrian who's um, oof good throw by him uh, you have Jadrian's a QB over at Hamburg right now I I'm telling you, these guys are very well coached. They got some good players. They got some good leaders. It's gonna be tough. It's gonna be fun. And they got Berlin. Ooh, a deep throw. Look at that. That's how you start the year. The Berlin 49ers, because it's exactly who they look like. <laughs> I tell you what, just just from watching, I know it was kind of a quick combination of highlights there, but. The one thing that I do see, one thing that I see, that I, I like a lot, is the fact that you're getting some of the best talent, not just in their respected countries, but you're getting some of the best talent in Europe in general that are coming over and playing for these teams. Um, I don't know what the pay rate is. I'm not sure if every every player is getting paid. Um, from things I've heard, I think some of the domestic guys are getting paid a little bit. So there's a lot of money involved if that's the case. They're, they have a cap roster, usually of about 40, 40 or 50, somewhere in there. So I think most people are getting paid something a little bit. They're trying to create a professional, a professional view as much as they possibly can. Um, I like some of the corporate sponsors that they have. Obviously you got Chio, the, the tortilla chip company. I had plenty of those when I was over in Germany. I think you have that, the ProSieben, uh, kind of back up there with with just the TV revenue or the just the TV exposure whatnot I think it is they're doing their best to create a, a ultra professional league. now for me that's all well and good I think they I think this league has a lot of good coaches because from a lot of staffs I look over in the EFL there's a lot of guys who used to be head coaches at the GFL level who are now coordinators or just position coaches which means you're getting good quality coaching top to bottom in this league so I'm, I'm telling you just from just from the eye test I, I think the speed is faster I'm telling you just from looking at it it's a little bit faster than GFL 1 um, which I think is a really good staple for a lot of players who want to play the next level I think this could be a really big deal that's all well and good as much as I want to say that but the biggest thing that I see that's kind of a concerning thing for me of the the TV was the the streaming TV game pass which is like hundred and twenty dollars Then I was looking around a little bit um, at some of the at the team shops and and the league shop you name it just curious to see where some of the pricing is at I think the actual like authentic footballs that they actually do sell online it's like a hundred it's like over a hundred dollars which 120 euros or so um, which is about normal for us to be honest with you now the thing that kind of is con that's concerning for me <laughs> is I was looking around at some of the team T-shirts. I was looking around at some of some of the apparel and whatnot. God, it's expensive. I'm not gonna lie. Now it is euros for sure, and I think when you do the exchange between euros and dollars, 
it is steep. These things are at least 50 to 70 bucks, depending on what you're getting. Um, now you can, you can debate me all day. It's like, oh, that's, that's normal for some other stores. Sure. But I'm telling you to, to give Europe a league like this, which I think is a great, it's a great idea. It's, I think it is needed, um, to some extent, but you're asking people to really hammer over an arm and a leg. Now, what does this mean for the league currently? Now, granted too, <laughs> granted too, I, I think you guys might think I'm being too harsh on them. I just, I'm just saying it from a coach perspective and as, as an American fan perspective. I love where they're going with some aspects of the league and whatnot, but the one thing that really concerns me, and this is kind of gonna be something that it's going to be something that I think all of you are going to have to watch, you know, watch for as the season progresses. Uh, the attendances were not that great. Um, I think at Hamburg, the attendance was a little bit better, but it really wasn't, I think all across the board, it wasn't that great. I think maybe some restrictions are still in place, which is fine, but I don't think they've won over their core group of fans just yet. And I think that's going to be concerning to, to you know, honestly concerning as much as possible to watch over over the course of the season there's a lot of people being paid um, not just coaches but players and I think also executives as well and there's I'm you know also two sponsors sponsors have a lot of money attached to this game as well so there's gonna be extremely concerning uh, financially for um, how things are set up I'll, I'll be honest like Across the board, everything, everything actually, everything looks a lot better. Uh, the speed is better. Uh, athleticism at this level a little bit better. Uh, I think it's awesome the fact that teams can also go to Poland and they can go to Spain and play a couple of games. I think that's that's really unique, really awesome. So, uh, I wish the league nothing but the best. I'm really curious to see what happens uh, towards the end of the year, especially for the championship game. I think it's going to be a really big spectacle. Um, I'm telling you, if things pan out this year with this league, you will ultimately see this league grow pretty quick. If things really turn around and they really take off, you will see this league um, just really expand aggressively, I think. I think you could probably see two or three more teams pop up in Germany for next year if things go well. Um, maybe at least two European teams could pop up as well. But these are some of the things that, in order for them to get there, they have to fix another front. So, going to be very intriguing. Make sure you guys keep keep a watch on them for sure. And as always, like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.